we <clears throat> we just used pack we didn't specify a side so like I said the default option is just to pack everything you know uh, right under the previous one so it just it iterated through all of our captions that we needed but it just packed them one on top of the other um, which we want them obviously like kind of how we had them in this list here that with rows of four so like I said the way we do that is we specify the side option and in this case we want to say left so that everything gets packed to the left of of the previous one or the, the one that was packed before would be on the left so let's try that So now you see instead of vertically it's horizontally because this one was packed in and then this one was packed and then this one was packed and everything just kind of to the left. But remember we want the rows of four, so max four buttons per row. So the way we're going to that to do that is using our class variable that we created up here, max buttons per row. So, like I said, we created this frame um, where, we're, where we packed them all in, but we're actually going to need an outer frame that's going to hold all the buttons and then a frame for each row. So, we'll call this one outer frame. that's going to hold nested frames for each of the rows. So now that we have the outer frame, we'll start with the first inner frame. We'll just call it FRM again. And now this inner frame, like I said, is going to be nested in the outer frame. And we'll go ahead and pack that in. So this still goes into frame but now we're going to have a counter. So we're going to say buttons in row equals zero because right now we don't have any buttons yet because we still haven't gone through the loop. So over here, before we create the button and pack it, we're going to say if buttons in row is equal to the max buttons per row meaning if there's already four buttons in there then we're going to want another frame for the other row so we'll pack that in as well and remember this one since we want the rows to be one on top of the other we don't specify any options, we just pack it in. So when buttons in row equals zero, and then it's going to iterate through this, the first four will be packed into this one. But then on the fifth one, um, when it comes and checks this condition, it's going to be, so Python is zero index, so it's gonna be index four. It's gonna be equal to the max buttons per row. It's going to create a new frame and then pack that into the outer frame, which would be the next row, and then the next four buttons will be packed into that frame. So let's see what we have now. So as you can see, it's still the way it was last time, and that is because we forgot to do one thing and that is to reset this variable. So we have buttons in row equals zero, and then, and we also forgot to increment it. <laughs> so after the button gets packed, then we need to say, now there's a button in a row, or each time it gets packed. So 
the way you increment in Python is um, you can either say button in row equals button in row plus one or the shortcut is to use plus equals and that will basically increment increment the original button in row um, so we'll, we'll increment it and this will just keep adding one to it but then we also need to reset it once there's a new frame because once a new frame gets created there's no buttons in it so when a new frame gets created for each row then we'll need to reset this back to zero so let's do that now and we have a an error over here unbound local error local variable button in row reference before assignment so going back over here that's because we called it buttons in row not button in row so when we try to increment button in row before there, there was no assignment over here that's why we got this error So now when we run that, <clears throat> as you can see now we have more of what we want it to look like, the calculator. We have four buttons per row and the rows are one on top of the other. So we have the, like I said, the simple buttons of the, of the simple calculator. We have the numbers and then simple addition, minus, multiplying, division, the percent, inversion, and the clear. And then, but see this kind of looks a little bit ugly. The entry is in the middle and there's space over here, space over here. So the way we fix that is with the fill option of the entry object. And like I said, there's uh, different resources out there where you can check all the all the options available for each, each object in the Tkinter module. So this one, um, it's actually a, a, an option of the, the pack method. So when we pack it, we'll specify that our fill, fill takes uh, one of three options, either X, Y, or both. In this case, we want X so that it fills the space horizontally. So let's try that. And now, as you can see, it's it filled the whole space. So now it looks a little bit better. So now we pretty much have everything we want in our in our view um, in our simple calculator. We have a uh, an entry. We have uh, our buttons, and in this case, uh, starting out as you can see, I was typing in here. But to start out, we're just going to make it so that the user can only use what's over here. So instead of typing on the keyboard and potentially you know, typing in letters or whatever. We'll, we'll do that later as well. But for now, um, we'll just use the buttons down here. So we'll make that entry. It has a read only option. And we'll set it to true. So the read-only option basically means that that entry is read-only, <clears throat> which, um, and as you can see, we have an error, unknown option, read-only. So, like I said, there's many resources to check the options. So I'll pull up a one of my favorite resources is from New Mexico Tech. Um, they have a reference module, it's pretty comprehensive on all the widgets. So, New Mexico Tech, uh, to enter. <clears throat> 